Hello everybody and welcome to my Clash of Clans historic timeline 2012 through 2015. Let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, starting off our timeline was a really important date. It was the day that Supercell released Clash of Clans to the world. August 2nd, 2012, it was available on iOS. And October 7th, 2012, it came out on Android. And that's when it began, guys. And the game looked a whole lot different than it does now. Here we have a really old clip and as you guys can see the game looks a lot different. We have a waterfall up on the top right that was eventually removed because it was causing too much in-game lag. It was a completely different game setup. There was no leagues. Um, clans were pretty, pretty basic. There was no wars. Um, it was just a completely different game. There was no spells at this point. But soon enough we started seeing changes while in August of 2012 Update 2.21 brought us the hidden Tesla. It was update 2.44 in September 18th of 2012 that really brought a new dimension to Clash of Clans with the introduction of spells. Lightning, rage, and heal spells made their way onto the scene, forever changing the way Clash of Clans people would attack and approach matchmaking. With this update, we also saw a second wizard tower being available to town hall level sixes and defensive replays that would help people improve their bases and make their defenses better. Shortly after this update, we saw the removal of being able to sell buildings. Yes, you used to be able to sell your buildings in Clash of Clans, and this is something not a lot of people know, and it is something that is really, really cool, and I wish they would bring it back. However, it was too much of a hassle for people, so Supercell thought it'd be better if they removed it from the game entirely. At the same time of the removal of the sell option, Supercell released their first ever seasonal event of Halloween Extravaganza, which introduced the pumpkin bomb and seasonal trees as well as objects around your base. Um, this also, this update also consisted of a Town Hall Level 9 being added into the game. At one point, there was not a Town Hall Level 9. That is crazy. Um, we also saw the introduction of the Expo, a crazy defense that we all know and love today, as well as the Jump Spell, which is very underutilized by people. Um, some highlight level players use it today, but back then it was super duper fun to have that spell, and yes. Shortly after the fall update, we saw the winter update on November 19th, 2012, which brought along with it a whole bunch of goodies. We have the 2012 Christmas tree, the Santa surprise, which a lot of people don't know about, and it's really, really interesting, as well as the Santa strike. Now, the Santa surprise was an issue because it took 25 hours to make, but it did 1500 damage. Now at this time, a maxed Town Hall level nine had 4,200 hit points. Um, they had just upped it that, to that amount in the same update. Um, so what players were doing and abusing it, they were gemming three Santa spells and then our Santa surprises and going into matchmaking and dropping those Santa surprises onto the Town Hall and actually destroying it um, and climbing up really fast. That's probably why we haven't seen the spell again. Um, but really interesting, I do have a clip of the spell being used, and I will show you guys that now. So here it goes. Ready? I gotta see this. Oh, it's Santa! That's pretty badass. Oh my god, that was cool. This was a really awesome time for Clash of Clans, and this update brought a whole bunch of great stuff, um, including... Defending clan castle troops learned how to jump over walls just like villagers do which is pretty hilarious as well as leaderboards being updated daily for people who came in and it was just a really good time for Clash of Clans. The next major update with the ending of the winter update came in January 10, 2013 with the introduction of new resources and new heroes. Dark Elixir hit the scene and heroes were thereby secured. I do have a clip of right when it came out. Um, I apologize for how tired and uh, pretty much lazy I sounded during the video, but I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, I'll be playing that in a second. Um, the Dark Elixir had came out, so they released the Dark Elixir drills, and there was just a whole bunch of upgrade. There was a, a second expo was added, and there was two new levels of walls that were added, the Spikes of Pain and the Flaming mag uh, Magma. That's actually the names of the walls. And here's the clip for you guys. I apologize for my quietness. But yeah, like I said, they have these new walls, which I'll show you here. And they're up to one or two million a piece, which is ridiculous. They're awesome looking, but one to two million a piece. And then these uh, Archer Kings and Queens, 
but you can get all the way up to level 30. It's funny how they say 30 right next to it, and then when you click it, it says level 1. And this is the number one player in the world right here. So they added that, and then they added these dark elixir things. These heroes were considered much stronger than today's heroes. They did not have abilities, however, they were a lot more damaging and a lot more tanky. So many people considered these to be a lot more powerful heroes. Moving down the timeline a little bit, we saw the introductions of leagues in April 2013, which was a great advantage for any players looking for a little bit of competitive edge, and it was very prestigious if you made it up into champions during this time as well as the player loot bonuses weren't bad either. Um, during the same update, we saw the release of Golems, which changed the attack strategy of the popular dragons to the super duper duper strong attack strategy of Go Wipe, which dominated for about a couple months, about one or two months before the next update came out. Um, during the same update, we saw the changes of the wall breakers UI um, a lot of bases back then used to have these spikes on the outside and the wall breakers were head towards that. Well, the new UI skipped those spikes and went straight for the goods. Um, so overall, I think this was a really good update for Clash of Clans, especially the wall breakers. And later on, the wall breakers would end up being changed from one housing space to two housing space. Now, shortly after the introductions of League, uh, leagues on May 23rd, 2013, the Town Hall level 10 was available, and this was the same day George Yao got it. He gemmed it up, and uh, this was his base at the time. He was miles ahead of everybody else. Um, Inferno Tower had just came out, and as you guys can see, P.E.K.K.A.s looked a, a, a whole lot different than they do today. They had changed the animations on that. They had already changed the dragon animations um, now, and they had just released the level 4 dragon, as you guys can see right there. So really, really sick. And it was really, really funny seeing the bases that worked at the time compared to now. As you can see, he's got his town hall in the center. And uh, everything else is pretty much on the outside besides that, besides his expo. Um, he's got one Inferno Tower in the center. So I don't think there was two at this time, but I, I'm not completely sure about that. Shortly after the introduction of the Town Hall in June and July of 2013, we saw the introduction of the Witch and the Free Spell, which once again changed the meta of how high-level players attack. Um, changing it from Go Wipe to Go Wee Wee, which was super powerful at the time because witches had not yet been nerfed. They had a lot longer range than they do now. I'm going to show you guys a clip of that right here. Uh, but here comes the witches. Look at them summoning their undead undead uh, minions. And those minions are actually pretty strong. In, in numbers, they do damage. I only had two in my last video, so I was like, weak. But now I have 11 of them, and they actually did good. I think the strategy is going to be summon your golem, and just put a bunch of witches behind them and you don't even need anything else. It's witches, wall breakers, and golems. That's the new attack. You got the go, I guess it would be the go, go wab, I don't know, the go, go, go wi -wa, go wi -wa attack. You got the golems, witches, and wall breakers. The go wa -wee. The go wa -wee. The golem, <laughs> wall breakers, and witches. <laughs> I think that's going to be the new attack strategy, you guys. I'll have to release a video like that just messing around, but we'll have to see the go while we attack strategy. But look at these minions. They're taking out the town hall, you guys. I can't believe that. And what's cool about those little minions, guys, is they actually distract the higher level defenses like that expo and inferno tower. They cause a distraction while the witches just keep sending in hordes and my archer queen's doing work. If I had wizards or a dragon or something, it'd be a lot different, you know? Um, but the, look at they just keep coming where are they coming from they took out that building They're gonna destroy those walls in a second Those these witches are actually awesome you guys, and I recommend everybody get them. They're really expensive though. They're 250 uh, Dark elixir which is gonna just eat up dark elixir, and I guess it's good uh... We ended up going on to three star that base which I'm sure you could do with today's witches however the old witches were miles ahead of the witches today in terms of strength I believe and in comparison, the other witches just would have absolutely dominated the ones that we have today. Moving forward two months, we saw the release of the update village edit mode, which was absolutely huge. We also saw the level 8 mortar come out. Um, being able to edit your base was such a relief. I can't tell you, people who are new to Clash of Clans, how much of a struggle it was to edit your base. Um, not being able to store your walls anywhere. You'd have to put everything on the sides of your base, all four corners. 
and then make it just having this edit mode was just like completely revolutionary and it was like amazing i was so excited everyone was so excited bases new bases were coming out it just just made it so much easier and it really helped with the diversity of the bases we saw in clash of clans to ring in 2014, we saw the introduction of hero abilities, Royal Cloak for the Queen, as well as Iron Fist for the King. Now, this left many Clash of Clans players upset with the new way it was. Many considered it a nerf. Um, there is, was a huge debate on it. A lot of top players quit. Um, I do have a clip of when this first came out. I used my abilities wrong. I apologize, Forefront, um, but this is just the day they came out. Put down my king and put down his iron fist. Yeah, he has a rage spell around him, so that's pretty cool. You just gotta make sure that your archers are around there. So I'm gonna unlock that one. Oh, I need to put down my wall breakers. I totally During the same update, we also saw the release of the gem box, as well as a lot of other tweaks to the way gameplay goes. You had the level 6 minions that had just came out. You had level 5 free spells that had just came out. Valkyries got a huge buff, having their hit points increased by 20% at all levels. And Hog Riders got their costs increased by 30% at all levels. Rage spells, however, got hit pretty hard, with the level 5s going from 80% to 70%. And free spells also receiving a buff, getting decreased cost from level three and four which is pretty cool and pekka's also got a huge buff so this changed a lot of the combat dynamics the next really big update that came out was clown wars this was announced on april 1st we had bozo the barbarian and we also had lulu the archer clown um, this was a huge update and it was what everyone was excited for and it was also an april fool's joke by supercell the real update was was Clan Wars. Now, a lot of people wondered why the game was called Clash of Clans when you didn't really go against other people's clans. And so this update really gave validation to the name Clash of Clans, and it was a great and fun way for people to have new places to attack, and it's constantly ever-changing. I think this is one of the things in the game right now that um, keeps a lot of people playing the game, and I also think this was one of the best updates that Clash of Clans ever did. And they've made a lot of upgrades to it since, and it is just my personal favorite update they've ever done. The next major update we would see would be in September 16th of 2014 with the introduction of the Lava Hound. Many people had wondered when a new troop had come out, and it had finally arrived. The Lava Hound is a beast. They did amazing sneak peeks up to it, and this shifted the meta for top level players and to this day lava hounds are still considered one of the strongest attack strategies as well um, with the balloons um, so yeah they're super duper strong this was a great addition to the game lava hounds might be a little op in my opinion so hopefully someday they release something to uh kind of combat them um, as the air bombs and the air traps i don't think are sufficient enough to take them out so we'll see in the future but this was a great update by supercell since the introduction of the Lava Hound, we haven't really seen any more major updates, and one can only speculate at what might be coming. My hopes are for a Town Hall level 11, or maybe a new mode of play. Who knows what they can come up with. Oh, and Chief Pat really wants more single player maps, by the way. Um, I'm sure I missed out on some updates, and you guys feel were just as important. However, I feel these were most significant in my Clash of Clans career. Um, moving forward, guys, I want to go over some player achievements that people have done inside the game since I've been watching. All right, guys, so I'm gonna be talking about a few players' records. If you guys want the full rundown, you guys can head over to the link I'm gonna put down in the description down below. There's actually a Hall of Fame where you can view all these records, um, but I'm just gonna talk about the ones that I remember the most. All right, guys, first up, we have George Yao. Without a doubt, probably one of the most Famous Clash of Clans player all times. He was the first to hit 4,000 trophies. He was the longest holder of first place in Clash of Clans. Millions of people have seen this guy. I remember following him. Everything he did was just crazy. And I actually met him in London. He's really, really a cool guy. And uh, he, he is probably one of my uh, idols for Clash of Clans. I don't know if I could play for that long, but this guy... This guy was freaking amazing at it while he did play it, and he has been spotted playing some as of late. Next up, we have Pelican Tacos. Now, I've watched this guy for a really long time. He's really interesting. He made a Town Hall level 2, and he wanted to get it to Champions. 
I wasn't able to find a picture of him up at his record, which is 3,016 on the wiki. It says 3,006, which is not correct. I've seen him at 3,016, which for a Town Hall level two, that's so hard. Your base is getting destroyed every time you log off. You have to gain so much. You have to find Town Hall snipes, and it's a struggle to kill those Town Halls. A really crazy player and a really amazing goal. That guy's just awesome. All right, guys, next up we have Brandon. This guy is just came out of nowhere, and he holds so many records. He's the Town Hall Terminator, first player to destroy 10,000 Town Halls. He achieved that on the 5th of December of 2013. Um, multiplayer Madness, first player to win 20,000 multiplayer battles. Multiplayer Legend, he, he was the first player to win 50,000 battles. Um, he achieved that six months after he did the 20,000, um, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, he holds the record for first player to achieve 10,000 Heroic Heist, which I believe is a Dark Elixir. And he is the first player to reach 20 million, which he did about a year later, so that is absolutely crazy. He holds more re more records too. Highest attacks one per season. He won 25,000 attacks in one season. He was the first player to level 300. Absolutely crazy. Uh, most town halls destroyed. Most multiplayer battles won. Most total capacity donated. He's donated 3.8 million troops. Can you imagine doing that? And uh, this guy's just a beast. He came out of nowhere, and he, he's maxed out completely on the game. So good for him. And, of course, there's so many other players I could mention. However, I, for the sake of the video, I don't want to include all of them. If you want to check out more, guys, there will be a link in the description. Um, but, yeah, guys, there's been so many things with Clash of Clans from 2012 and 2015, and it's, it's exciting to see where the game goes. I decided to make this video because I was feeling really nostalgic um, looking back at some of my old videos and I thought it would be fun to put together this and maybe at the end of next year I will update this and uh, use this video and add on to it. Who knows guys but I hope you guys enjoyed. I worked really really hard on it. Let me know down in the comments down below your favorite memory of Clash of Clans and guys I'm gonna be shooting for a lot. Let's see if we can get 1,000 likes on this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you guys are just now stopping by, subscribe for more Clash of Clans content and other mobile games as well. And you guys like, comment, subscribe, and take it easy.